All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our final installment of Matchup Week here as the Buffalo Bills will be taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. We have enlisted the services of the one and only film guru, the best guru you could find in Buffalo. Uh, as far as, you know, the whiteboard is concerned, he's probably got it around him somewhere. <laughs> uh, Mike Granada, who's a former Division One uh, defensive coach. and Minus. Uh, <laughs> Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. But we're going to talk about the matchup of all matchups, the one that everyone's looking forward to, especially Bills fans. Patrick Mahomes versus Josh Allen in this game. It means a lot to a lot of people, but it probably means more to Buffalo Bills fans because you're, if if Buffalo were to lose this game, the ghost of Christmas past, past is going to come back and say, listen, you had a shot to draft this guy. You passed on him, took Tredavious White in a first-round pick, and you, you, gave, Pat, you gave Andy Reid Patrick Mahomes. And I know that has been the narrative for a while. We haven't heard it a lot this year because Allen's been playing at an MVP level. So um, we're going to be talking about the matchup between Mahomes and Allen, and I understand that. But the first thing I want to go over, and I just it's a quote from our very own Paul. He doesn't remember it, but I remember it vividly from an episode almost two years ago. Oh and I want to, I just okay. want to give this quote to Mike, and I want him to see if his analysis comes, if it's the same. Paul said that Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen do not play the quarterback position the same way. He said Patrick Mahomes plays it like a shortstop. Now, being a baseball guy as well as a football guy, how, is that pretty accurate how, how Mahomes tends to play the quarterback position? Well, uh, Paul doesn't have a lot of good ideas, but this is, this is definitely <laughs> one of them. This, this is, I, I'm just, I'm thinking about it, Paul. I'm thinking about him turning. To, yeah, he, his arm angles are great. Yeah. <laughs> um and, and and I think Allen plays it like a right fielder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Get me yeah. guy at home. I yeah. agree. That Paul, that's a great analogy, man. Why? Why thank you. Why yeah. thank you. Uh yeah, it's I I you would just look at the stature of the two guys, you know, like you look at Josh Allen, you just see the throwing motion, you're like, okay, that looks like it looks like Judge. You know, <laughs> like out in right field. It just looks like Judge. They got a rocket arm. Yeah. yeah. Like Judge. And the contrast and how they play the position different, it's almost like you're, you're comparing apples to oranges, especially in that mm -hmm. first year when a lot of people were getting really upset. Mahomes sat out his first year. He was able to learn under Andy Reid and Alex Smith, and then he was able to throw 50 touchdowns the, final, the next year. Bills fans at that point were just beside themselves, and I understand that. But you start to look at the differences of these two guys, and, and you know they're playing two completely different offenses. They play for two completely different play callers. Um, the, the talent – as we said before, that surrounded Mahomes was far greater than that surrounded Allen. So there seemed to be more growing pains for Allen in his progression up until this point than Mahomes had. And, you know, we, we'd stated before, there was only one spot for Mahomes to go, and he hasn't gone there yet. You know what I mean? He throws 50 yeah. touchdowns in his second year in the league. You, you only can go down from there, and he hasn't. He's, he's been, a, he's been a, a stellar quarterback. Which um, I, I want to ask Mike this, and I'll go to Paul. How big do you think experience plays in this game, being in this moment for the third straight time for Mahomes and it's the first time for Allen? How huge would you put uh, experience as far as uh, coming into this game for both players? Well, Mahomes hasn't lost this game yet. Um, that, that, that bull crap a couple of years ago, guy lining up offsides, Brady yeah. throwing a pick. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he, he really, and, and, then, and then he loses in overtime. Not getting the ball, by the way. Yeah. They didn't get the ball. So yeah. – right. uh, Mahomes, he doesn't shy away from this sort of thing. And it, what he does, and I, I mentioned it a couple episodes ago, he hasn't made Josh Allen type mistakes. And I'm one of the biggest Josh Allen fans in the world. I think he's fantastic. When everyone was talking about his accuracy issues coming out of Wyoming, and I always tell you this, name one Wyoming wide receiver. You can't. <laughs> so I don't think he had accuracy issues. I think he had bad wide receiver issues. Bottom line, um, 
but I digress. Mahomes has been in this game before. He doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't make them. And then, and, and I brought it up a couple of, a couple episodes ago with when I talked about uh, uh, Allen taking that sack in Indianapolis. I guarantee yeah. there was a gasp in Buffalo when he did that. Mm-hmm. They were like, oh, here we go again. And then you start thinking about Houston last year. You're like, oh, Jesus, what are we doing? Mm-hmm. He has growing pains. He's getting better, though. Allen's rise is meteoric, all right? Here's, here's, here's uh, Patrick Mahomes' rise. He went whoosh, in a rocket ship straight up, and he mm-hmm. stayed there. This is Alex, and he's getting better every week. But experience will play a role in this. It comes down, and this is what we talked about being in that shootout. We get in that shootout, Mahomes isn't going to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Allen is or not. I don't. I hope he doesn't. But if you get in a shootout, you always got that in your mind. Like, ah, until he does it, until he wins a Super Bowl, you're going to be like, ah, is he going to do this again? You know, I'm with Mike on that. As we really haven't seen Josh Allen passing football mistakes. It's often been Josh Allen fumble mistakes, right? So in the last 10 games, he's got seven fumbles. And that's, I. it's just every time a defensive player gets near him, you're watching the football as a Bills fan, right? Like that's anytime Josh is getting close to contact, you're watching the football to see if it's going to hit the turf. And, you know, Patty Mahomes is just a little bit of a different animal. Like it's just, it's just the way it is. Yeah, Patty Mahomes in weeks 13 through 16 fumbled the ball three times. That He's never done that in his career in a four-game stretch. Three-game stretch, excuse me. He's never done that before. Mm. So it's just it's just a different level of animal, right? Um, I, I love Josh Allen. I do. Josh Allen throwing the football, uh, I have moved past worrying about that at this point, right? Some of the throws that he can make on the run still scare me as a Bills fan, but you just have to believe that he's going to complete them. Uh, Diggs and Brown and Gabe Davis uh, along the sideline have been – tightrope walkers it's like nick nick walinda out there it's it's been phenomenal but you have to at some point wonder whether those passes are just going to be a little off target a little forced right and um this is a bright light and we're going to see what alan's made out of like the i don't think any of us would have signed up for this uh after seeing the way that he played houston right no. never would have saw this coming never i we were all scared uh, all, every every Bills fan was concerned after that Houston game. Yeah, and I don't think I, you know. I'm not going to put you know. I'm not going to say something about Patty Mahomes becoming complacent because he's already won a Super Bowl. But there's there's a difference between chasing the crown and defending the crown. It's a totally different animal. So the pressures mm-hmm. I think that are going to be on Mahomes because of the rocket ship that he went up in, as far as Mike you know, described it, he's already up. There's only one place for him to go. I mean, Allen. There's still detractors out there of Allen. Who would say, listen, this guy can't do it. He's inaccurate. Look at what he's doing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, (laughs) Hashtag Nick Wright. You know what I mean? And and Skip Bayless, you know, all these guys coming out of the woodwork. This guy's in the AFC championship game, has been, has accounted for like 87% of the Buffalo Bills touchdowns of the second highest scoring offense in the NFL. And they're Mm -hmm. still saying that he can't do it. So, Mm -hmm. Mike, what's the phrase, you know, when everyone about you is losing their heads, but you're, you're calm, you don't fully understand the situation. I think that's what Allen is. That's what I see at when I see Allen coming into this AFC championship game. And when he's Mm like, and I know what you're talking about with the flinch, uh, you know, against Indianapolis, where he was talking about, oh, he took that sack. We have seen almost the disappearing act of Josh Allen hero ball. As, as Paul and I called it many times mm-hmm. on the show, You're like, listen, he needs to cut down those hero ball plays, live to play another play. He needs to throw it away, slide, anything else that he's been doing, but he tries to be play hero ball. He, in the last four games, I haven't seen any hero ball out of Allen. Even, you know, he's throwing, he's throwing those, those shots at the sidelines to, you know, to Gabe Davis and John Brown. He, he's hitting digs over the middle with Beasley and all these other guys. He, it seems like he grasps what they're trying to do. And, he, st- he seems like, you know, like the Buffalo Bills mantra, humble and hungry. They want to go and they want to chase that ring. It's a far different mentality, two different players, two different systems of defending the crown versus chasing the crown. I think it's going to be so interesting to see because I honestly think there's more pressure on Mahomes than there is on Allen coming into this game because Mahomes has everything to lose. Mm-hmm. Nobody expected Allen or the Bills to be here. They have nothing to lose, and you're a dangerous person when you have nothing to lose. In a street fight. In a street fight. Yeah. In a street fight. What, what, and what would you qualify this as, Mike? 
you know what? Well, he signed a tr- what was it? A half a trillion dollars? Yeah, it's, 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 it's an absurd money. amount of money. Yeah, There's the nothing. actual dollars are a little liquid, right? Because um, Patty Mahomes the- has nothing to lose here. Yeah, no. whether he wins this game or not, he's still going to be part owner of the Royals. Basically, <laughs> so, yeah. I do want to point out uh, a a. An interesting comparison between Mahomes and Allen when they have a lot of time in the pocket. We've seen Allen be really creative this year. He's been really dangerous once he gets the split pro football reference listed out as plus two and a half seconds in the pocket. Right. So when both quarterbacks have more than two and a half seconds in the pocket, Patty Mahomes has been sacked 20 times. Josh Allen has been sacked 11 times. Allen's quarterback rating is 102. Mahomes is 97. Allen has thrown more interceptions than Mahomes in that in that instance, but Allen is outperforming Mahomes in literally every category except first downs. Mahomes has completed more first downs. But I think the major difference there is that when you take a look at the numbers for less than two and a half seconds, Allen's been sacked 15 times when he has less than two and a half seconds in the pocket. Mahomes, two. Wow. That just tells you the difference in the offense. Yeah. That's system, right? That's not that's not Mahomes being a better quarterback than Allen. That's just system. That's that's the skill level players that we talked about in other episodes. That's what that's get that's that's getting open quick. Like less than two and a half seconds, and you've only got two sacks all year, where Allen has more uh sacks than he well, does when he has more than two and a half seconds. Well, like Paul, it's, he came from a spread. He's used to getting the ball out of his hands in two and a half seconds. I think yeah, that's a fair point. <laughs> but fair he, point. I think but Look, you can't look at these stats though in a vacuum, Paul. You got to look at it in 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 in, in you got to look at the whole thing. You got to look at the whole picture. What are those type of plays he's getting sacked on? Or what are the types of plays that are less than two seconds? Are we talking about screens? Because Andy Reid is a big screen guy. Mm-hmm. And two sure. seconds, boom, you got to get rid. You know, so exactly. What are we talking about here? And and the other right. fact is, Allen is what is he like six five and what is he like two fifty? He's gigantic, right? <laughs> yeah. Allen's a gigantic man. Yeah. So he's going to stay in the pocket longer and maybe get beat up a little bit longer and say, okay, I'm going to try to, to hit this. I'm going to, I'm going to stand in the pocket a little longer. Patty Mahomes doesn't have to. Well, Mahomes is no little guy. Mahomes is six, three, you know, so he's, he's right. no little guy either on stilts. Maybe yeah, he's six, three. He's all uh, a six, three. I like to check the tell the tape, sir. Six, <laughs> four with that six, four with that state farm haircut. He's got, can I see the combo? Uh, yeah. He stood up next to Rogers. He ain't no six, three. He looked like a midget next to him. <laughs> People like to doubt my height, man. I'm really <laughs> sure. Ooh, man. <laughs> my point was not, and I, I agree with you, Mike, is, so I'm not looking at those stats in a vacuum. My, my point was that it is a lot about system, right? Yeah. Allen yeah. does not have those quick hit plays. Like you really don't see them. They, they really don't run any of that. They really don't. Buffalo just lets routes develop. They don't have a lot of those easy completions. Whereas Reed, runs his offense through a, a lot of that, you know, like it's, it's a lot of that. It's like 30% of that offense are, are those quick hits. That's it. Just get the ball in your skill, skill players hands. See what happens. Let them go. That's, yep. that's it. Yeah, that's it. So it's, it's just wild when we, you know, we look at it and like, I'll give you an example, right? Patty Mahomes has one, two, three, four, five, six nicknames. Six nicknames. How many does Josh Allen have? One. Zero. <laughs> Zero. Pro Football Reference has Mahomes as Showtime, Magic Man, The Musician, uh, Fat Trick. I don't know what that one is. Uh, the Gunslinger and Mahome Boy. Josh Allen has Josh Allen. All sweet names for a shortstop. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, though, too, Paul, one thing you, I think you have to take into account is on those when you're talking sacks or not sacks mm-hmm. is when you're a coach and you'll hear that you'll hear them talking about this on TV all the time. Hey, there's not a lot of plays for third and 12. There's not a lot of plays for third and double sticks. Patrick Mahomes doesn't care. Patrick Mahomes philosophy is All right, I'll take the sack here. Andy Reid's going to go for it anyway. <laughs> What's the difference? And he's got 92 plays in the book for third and 17. So, you know what I mean? He's like, whatever. 
that's one of the things too is that we have to be very conscious of is that you talk about Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy here working with Patrick Mahomes and and developing this guy and, and, and how in, in honing his skill set and you talk about Allen who's been working primarily with Brian Dable for the past three years and then a, a sidebar conversation to that is the thing that scared me in the week six matchup uh, you know if we're just talking solely about Allen is the matchup of Brian Dable versus Steve Spagnolo and mm-hmm. this is a guy who as Steve Spagnolo who has engineered a, def- a defense that stopped the 18 and 0 Patriots. You know, I mean, that's, that's no easy feat for a guy, for a team to do. And he was able to orchestrate that by playing, wait, wait, Mike, what did they play in? What did they play? What defense do you play to beat a Brady? I can't remember what it was. <laughs> Please say it for the nation. I was in Colorado, by the way, for that game, by the way, I was in Colorado and I watched that game and it was great. Plexico Burris was amazing. And uh, the catch on the helmet. Oh my God. Uh, well, you know what you, you know what you play to beat Brady is you play man under too deep, and you play it the whole game. And guess what? Those little three yard passes aren't open. Just <laughs> Well, that's the thing because you know Dable runs a very similar system to that you know, what Brady ran in New England. If you want to go man under too deep and try to generate pressure with four, you make them go second level. Allen can, Brady can't. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's the difference can that we have. Too. Yeah. Yeah. The receivers can too. The like, receivers can too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the only time Brady had a receiver that could do that was Moss. Yeah. But Belichick, he said he, he drafts all the little five foot, 10 inch guys that run four, six <laughs> and go, go underneath, go underneath. So I'm going to play man to man on you guys. Thanks. We, so, said, we, Mike, we I, said that about Belichick. Real quick, Paul. We said that yeah. about Belichick. He sets a chair at the three cone drill to get his receivers. That's it. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> He's like, Click. <laughs> what'd, you in, what'd you play in college? Safety. You're a receiver. Get over here. <laughs> so, Mike, I have to ask. I said something very daring, and I just need your opinion on it. Oh, so, boy. I said something daring of many, many episodes ago, and Mar will back me up on this because he brought it up on the phone to me the other day. I boldly stated that Stefan Diggs was the best first round pick that Brandon Bean has ever made. That's pretty funny. Uh, it's, <laughs> funny. That's well, funny. I'm just saying I it's like it. well, you have Diggs and you have Allen, right? So they they are mutually exclusive right now. Yeah. Right. Like you, you just look at Allen's success and, and Diggs is is the straw that stirs the drink there, right? So that's that's where that comes from. Are they mutually exclusive? Like if if you lose Diggs first snap, right? Is this even a football game? Like you look at I look at the secondary for Kansas City and there's not a single thing that scares me except Matthew, right? Like he's an animal. The honey he's just an animal. He is. But uh the other weapons that Buffalo has, I mean, Gabe Davis could could be huge in this game because Beasley's super banged up, right? I, I think they're gonna do everything they can to take Diggs out of the game as quick and as fast as possible. And he, Diggs is gonna get banged up. Like they're they're gonna be nasty to him because they they simply are not calling pass interference, defensive pass interference unless somebody dies. Like <laughs> it's just they're not calling it in the playoffs. So Diggs is gonna get banged around this game. So if Diggs goes out, Buffalo's chances of winning go from like fifty percent to like well, Paul, what? Oh, they're gonna run the ball thirty five times. So don't worry. Oh, about you stop it with that. Oh my god. Hold on, I got something for you. Oh boy, here comes the play. No, I, no. I, I, I remember when Paul made that statement and it was a very bold one because mm-hmm. he, he does. I mean, you saw an immediate impact of this guy in this offense and how this offense now translates. Boom. Dawson, Dawson Knox. <laughs> yes. He can't even catch COVID. Just throw the ball to SEC players. 